Hello, dear family. Thank you for joining us for another episode of The Bible Says. Today, I want to ask, are you or have you ever been at a time in your life that you feel you're hopeless? You just know that in your heart, you've committed too many sins, committed too many horrific crimes to ever come into the presence of our Heavenly Father to ask for His forgiveness let alone to ask anyone else's forgiveness. You feel you're in such a state of darkness that you can't see past those storm clouds to see the light of day. If so, I want to share two Bible stories that will give you hope and encouragement. The first story is taken from Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee, by God, that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much, that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about two thousand, and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it into the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts and when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed, and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. This story is a great miracle, one of hope and encouragement. Notice that the demon-possessed man had no control over himself. He was so controlled by the demons that he hurt himself time after time. However, when that same demon-possessed man saw Jesus, he recognized the one in whom he could be delivered freed from the satanic possession and bondage of sin. That same demoniac approached Jesus, and Jesus read in that man's heart what his mouth couldn't utter, a plea for deliverance and forgiveness. 
If this is you or someone you know, no matter your crime or sin, this story gives you the answer for which your soul longs for. There is freedom in and through Christ. The demons of hell are no match for our Redeemer. He defeated the devil and all the evil angels that have fallen with him long ago when he rose from the dead and ascended to our Heavenly Father. Hallelujah! The second story is one most of us are familiar with. That is, the conversion of Saul to Paul. Unlike the demoniac in our prior story, for all appearance sake, Paul was a devout man of God. He was an eloquent and well-educated man of the scriptures. His story begins at the time of the stoning of Stephen, a disciple of Jesus. Let's take a look at that in Acts chapter 7, verses 57 and 58, which reads, Then they cried out, with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord, and cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. The story continues in Acts chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial, and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hailing men and women committed them to prison. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Saul was zealous for the Lord. He felt his actions in the persecution of the Christians gave him favor with God. However, unbeknown to Saul, we see that another spirit, not of God, was influencing him. We'll conclude by reading Acts chapter 9 verses 1 through 22. And Saul, yet breathing out threatening and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light, from heaven, and he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand, and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias? And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. And he hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem, and here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, 
to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will shew him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. And he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues. But he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem, and came hither for that intent, that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? But Saul increased the more in strength, and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. What a beautiful conversion story! Paul's story shows us that if we are sincere in wanting to obey God and to do all that is pleasing to Him, God, knowing the hidden and deep things of our hearts, will guide us into all truth and will cleanse, forgive, and deliver us of all sin and evil influence or control. I don't know about you, but I say praise the Lord. Those stories are so encouraging. As vile as we may be, God can and will make a way of escape. He alone can break your chains of bondage to sin. Is that your desire today? May God bring deliverance and forgiveness into your life today is my prayer. Until next time, Maranatha.